Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and welcome back to another edition of my videos. Today I'm going to be going through the woodpecker method. Uh, one of the training things that I'm doing uh, during the lockdown is going through lots and 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 lots of tactics. And uh, this particular book that I've got on a chessable study is known as the woodpecker method. It came out of another book called Pump Up Your Rating. This was a uh, an excellent book that came out a few years ago which went through some of the training regimes of grandmasters and in particular it talked about something known as the woodpecker method which was essentially solving lots and lots of tactics over and over and over again till those tactical themes become ingrained in your mind so when you play a game you'll be able to recite potentially recite those particular tactics in your own game and um, you know it's just it's just like uh, anything like doing rep things repetitively, practicing different things. It, it's just like, you know, you, what you do in sport, you know, uh, let's say if you're throwing a baseball uh, a thousand times, eventually that's going to make you uh, throw that baseball a little bit better, a little bit stronger and work on your technique. And it's the same thing in chess. You're developing your muscles for chess and training them on a daily basis. So that's really all this woodpecker method's all about. Training your mind to think like chess and suddenly everything will become like chess. Ah, my computer is chess. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so um, yeah, what I'm going to do with this though, I'm going to go through a few puzzles. I'm going to try and keep these videos to less, uh, just over 10 minutes long as I don't want to bore you guys to death. But you, you guys can solve these at home and I'll go through these very slowly so you can understand some of the uh, thought processes and some of the most important things uh, to do when solving the puzzles because some of them are quite difficult uh, if you can't see the uh, the motive straight away there's a little um, way a little guide that I learned along the way of how to solve these tactics um, uh, so you know an, easy, an easier way essentially um, so you guys can hopefully be able to then solve it right so let's get into the first puzzle um, and so you guys can pause it give it a try and see if you can solve it yourself so um, okay so basically what uh, what I like to do whenever I'm solving any puzzle if I can't solve it immediately and I'm going oh I can't see anything um, I look at the following things. So the first thing I need to do is I need to look at what's known as the forcing moves. So what is a forcing move? It's a move that forces a response from your opponent. And a really uh, key one is uh, a check. A check is a great forcing move because it means that your opponent has to react to the check. It is against the rules not to react to a check. So... Uh, putting your opponent into check means they have to do something against it. So um, so that's the first thing I'd look at. So I'd look at all the different available checks in the position. I would then look at a capture as well. So anything, again, that forces a response from your opponent. So with a capture, they have to do something against it. They have to react in some way. And when I look at any capture, I then also look at, is there been a weakness from my opponent being created if they capture in a certain way. So that's always very important is when you see your opponent's moves, see if it leaves any weakness behind it. Okay, I then look at any loose pieces in the position. So I'll talk a little bit what a loose piece would be in a second. And then finally, I would have a look at some of the imbalances in the position and see what, what potential uh, things could happen. Uh, so I'd, I'd maybe uh, that, that I would kind of only resort to the imbalances if I if I'm struggling to see a, an immediate tactic. I'd maybe just look at just the position as a whole and go through all the different things that are going on. So I hopefully don't have to get too far uh, too far to the imbalances because <laughs> I can't remember all the different imbalances from uh, Jeremy Storm, but I can remember most of them and some of the important ones uh, in that. Right. Let's have a look. So checks. I'm looking at any checks. Okay, well, I've got one check here. I've got a rook check here. Okay, so I can see this check. How does white respond to this check? Well, he can capture with this king. Okay, so that would be my force thing. So I could stop here if I wanted to, but let's have a look at some other things in the position that are worth noting. So I can see here that this king is uh, a little bit precariously placed. His, a lot of his escape squares 
are being covered here. In fact, he's got nowhere he can go. Okay, so that's pretty important. So if 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 um, for whatever reason this pawn here that is on h2 suddenly disappeared, this would in fact be checkmate. And again, this could be another way of trying to solve these puzzles. You can look at dream positions. I'll write this down, dream positions. I like this word. Um, this was actually something that was brought up in Jeremy Silman's book on reassess your chess. So he talks a bit about looking at for your dream position. What, if something wasn't there for every reason, what, how can it, how would your position then look? So if I got rid of this pawn somehow, I would be delivering checkmate, right? So I've got one rook here and I've got another rook here. Is there a way I can forcibly remove this pawn? Well, I've just said already that I've got this check here, which is a forcing move. So he has to do something against us. He has to capture back. And as soon as that's played, ooh, his friend's going to come flying along to the H file and deliver a checkmate. Right, well, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to do that move. And that is, in fact, checkmate in two. Hey, that is a lovely resource there. Right, let's get to the next one. Okay, so this one's a little bit tougher. A little bit tougher, but we'll work for it together. Again, I'm going to go through my methods. Right, so we've got checks, captures. So let's first look. Let's look at any checks here. Okay, so we've got one check in this position. Oh, another thing I should also say is this king looks really unsafe here. He's only got one square he can go to. So if I had something that could hit along this diagonal, I'm going to be delivering checkmate. But the problem is, I'd love to get this diagonal open, but this bloody pawn's in the way, and this bishop's defending this pawn. Well, it's not really defending, but blocking the pawn from getting in. So that doesn't look all that good to me. If I can get this moving, I've got my dream position. I've got a checkmate. In fact, this particular checkmate. No, it's a Bowden mate. So I've got my beautiful Bishop Bowden mate. Okay, so. All right, I've got a check here. That looks pretty good. Now, is there any way he can get out of the check? So we go for the ABCs of checks. We've got avoid, block, capture, ABC. Right, can he avoid it anyway? Well, he can't. He can't block it because the rook is right next to the king. So the only way he can get out of it is, in fact, a capture. So this is a forced move. So he's forced to do this. He's got no other move. And as soon as bishop comes here, suddenly our dream position becomes a reality. I can now push this pawn forward and deliver a checkmate along there. Well, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go through with that. And there we go. We've got, oh, the bishop got in the way. So sometimes, as I say, guys, make sure you look at the variation all the way through and all of the different forcing moves and variations. Uh, I knew that was going to happen, by the way. Don't worry. <laughs> I was just I was just testing you. I was just testing you. OK, so let's click the next one. Hopefully we can solve one more in this one. So this one's a little bit of a toughie and it's given us a bit of a clue, which um, we can hopefully work with as well. So again, have I got any checks in this? Let's go through my checklist. So are there any checks in the checklist? Well, there aren't actually any checks here. So we actually can't do the first one. But are there any captures in this position? OK, let's, well, let's have a look. Well, we've got one capture. There's only one capture. In fact, well, there's two captures. We've got queen captures here and we've got bishop captures here. So let's look down these lines. Do they do anything? If I capture this... This pawn captures, eh, there's not really anything there, is it? We're just down the queen, nothing's really happened. But let's have a look at this bishop captures line. Okay, so he's forced to capture this pawn, of this pawn. If he doesn't, the knight goes, rip a piece, happy days. So he's got a capture with this. Now, it's already explained here, this bishop is pinned. So if this bishop wasn't here for whatever reason, this queen could capture this bishop. So now that we've captured this, one of the things and one of the great things about pins is if you've ever got a pin, you should always re-attack it. So if this pawn wasn't here, 
I would have a potential dream position slowly cooking up here. I could move this pawn forward and I'd be pinning this bishop so or attack re-attacking the bishop so to speak so it would have to move out the way if it captured I'll be very happy with that as I can take the bishop which is better a bishop or a pawn well we can safely say the bishop is probably a bit better than the pawn so already I'm cooking up all these different things I'm then applying the brute force methods uh, so if I captured this knight this pawn captures I move this pawn forward this bishop, he has to do something, he has to jump out the way, and then this bishop then falls. Okay, I like the sound of that, so let's go for that. Let's move forward, it's given me the position. So, as I say, that's that's going to be uh, it for this. We've only done three, three, uh, three puzzles in this one, but you can hopefully kind of see some of the thinking methods um, in trying to reach certain positions. If you can't see the tactics straight away or immediately, Okay, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, I'll try and um, put some more on here very, very soon. Take care. Bye.